You bought a Raspberry Pi? Congratulations, let's set it up. This is a 3 model latest 2010-15. First of all, you're gonna need a very fast SD card. Don't use the cheapest possible one. Buy a fast one because it will help you in booting time so you don't waste time with stuff. I'm gonna use a SD card uh, writer, but you can use your laptop if you want. So I plugged it in. Now I want to clean it because it was used with other stuff before. So I'm in Windows now. I write this part. And here I, I write list disk. I select the disk number two. Make sure you select the right disk. You write clean and then create partition primary and then exit. It's done. After that you download the Raspbian Jesse Lite torrent or zip and with Win32 Disk Imager you just click on write and it will take some time to write it. After that prepare um, an HDMI adapter, your power supply, your keyboard and a mouse and we are going to set up the rest of the stuff. So after you wrote uh, the image for the micro in the micro SD card, put a keyboard and a mouse into your Raspberry Pi, connect an HDMI cable, and now let's power it on. Don't worry about those pins, I'm just too lazy to take them out. So now you should see it booting and it says welcome to Pixel powered by Raspbian. I have no idea why, why it's Pixel, probably because I've put it Android things with Android 7 before, but anyway. Now it, tell, let's wait a little, alright so here is our desktop and it's not connected to anything so let's connect the ethernet cable right here okay so i connected the ethernet cable let's verify it if it has internet i'm gonna open it here at terminal and ping google So we have internet through the uh, Ethernet cable, but now let's put it on Wi-Fi. So I'm going to install a Wi-Fi manager and you, you see, and you can install it with sudo apt get install wiki djtk. Now let's wait. Don't bother to install yourself with Steam. Um, with a VNC server because why you need it I don't know you're go not going to see the screen anyway so now that we have Wi-Fi let's connect to our Wi-Fi network and it's working only wireless all right now let's get rid of this keyboard and mouse which is totally useless. And for this, we're gonna access our Raspberry through SSH. But one more thing to do before we do this, we're gonna configure the SSH daemon to run on startup. So we go into Raspberry configurations and we go to SSH to be enabled. Okay, after this let's protect it because protecting um, stuff is nice. Let's install fail to ban. So we go again and write install fail to ban.
and after it's done installing we go into the configuration and enable the SSH jl uh, ban time so here in uh, the file jail config I'm gonna you see that the SSH is enabled and I'm gonna put the max it try to number three oops I forgot to run it with sudo but anyway it's important that SSH is um, enabled okay so now let's found our IP IP no I've conf so remember this IP uh, because we're gonna use it to connect it to the Raspberry Pi now in the desktop we open putty we enter the IP that um, we we remember it's the Raspberry Pi or we open the root and see which which IP it gives us it should give us the same IP I connect it and the login is Pi and the password is Raspberry let's change that password password and I'm gonna put another one oh um, like this current one well come on okay I updated the password now I'm gonna show you a little trick uh, I'm gonna close this session and I want to open it in mob uh, mobix term this is much nicer so I have it here already and I put my IP here and um, I can configure it let's make this terminal a little bit bigger okay and it will pr also prompt me to remember the password um, so I want yes to remember the password and voila everything works as intended so now for the initial part of the setup I'm pretty much over now it's your choice whether you choose to program in Java in Python in C in assembler or in whatever you want to program in my choice would be Java and Python because I'm a Java developer and now being so powerful let's a stop uh, just to see to show you how powerful this Raspberry Pi is come on so pff, voila you have four cores and memory one gigabyte more more than enough more than enough it can run spring framework easily so my choice would be Java after that Python because you find so many um, drivers for all kinds of um, devices sensors LCDs on internet written in Python and um, <coughs> this is one of the things why um, the, if you install Android things that the current state how it is you cannot run Python so all those drivers are pretty much useless and you have to convert them in Java so yeah I'll just stick to with Raspbian for now okay so we set up um, our Raspberry now let's set up the Java so we have here a Java Gradle file first thing you want to do is to import this library p4g into the Gradle and um, yes this is the library we will you will use to interface the Raspberry Pi now here I have a Spring Boot project and Lombok for easier injection of mainly log file logging 
Um, actually, this I don't think we need this test file. Okay. After you set up your project, you just go to deployment, uh, configuration, connection. You select SFTP. You put in the IP of the Raspberry Pi. The port, let's test it, it's ok. Uh, mappings, excluded pass, ok, all ok. Here I have controlling code UTF-8. Ok, let's click ok. I'm just gonna upload this one here and it says uh, permission denied. I don't know why. Could not create folder. What? Let me check my deployment. Okay, so the root pass here, where I put them. Let's put them in projects. Playground. Let me create a folder playground. And I will upload them. Okay. They are uploaded. Let's check them here. I ah, you know you can use follow terminal folder. So, okay, you see you have here all the project fi projects or the files. Alrighty, so uh, now that I have this Java, where is it? This Java set up. I have set up the deployment. Let's give it a test. So, um, uh, put run. And, uh, okay, and it's complaining I didn't do sudo. Okay. Alright, so now it will start the application and um, if you want you can download the code here it's um, github.com slash andre slash jarvis uh, and if you don't want to use bosch your things you can just remove it from <coughs> from the gradle file but you can use the, the other parts too maybe i'll up upload this um, a sample on GitHub. So check check my repositories. Better just go here on um, Android the tab repositories. Check what I have. All right. So now uh, our project will start. It doesn't do anything, I think, at the moment. It run a schedule service. Um, yeah. Okay. So. Now what I'm going to do is to go to run, edit configurations, and you're gonna create a remote one, a remote, okay? And then on the remote one, you're gonna put the host, the host one, this one, okay? The IP of the Raspberry Pi and the port 5, 5005. And you just gonna copy paste this command line arguments for running remote JVM. Alright, so with this being said, um, ah, okay, I already put here. Okay, so I did I did this for you. Um, this command line arguments will uh, allow you to uh, debug remotely this uh, JVM and you see now it's doing something. Let's put a breakpoint. Um, I don't know. Let's put a breakpoint here. Ah, okay, and you have to go to remote.
and you have to click debug and voila you have this remote debugging of the your project which comes very handy all right um, let's see what Python we have to um, 2.79 okay so I'll stop for now I hope if you're a Java developer or you want to start programming Java with Raspberry Pi this short tutorial helped you check out my github for some code samples for your projects have a good night